Hello, this is Ajahn Nisarano, um, uh, recording this special guided meditation, Metta Guided Meditation, from Newbury Buddhist Monastery in Victoria, Australia. So this is a very special occasion to honour Ajahn Brahm's birthday, 70th birthday, and this is our offering to our teacher, how we can pay respects to our teacher, and of course, for any teacher, it's our practice of what they've taught us. That is the way that we really do justice to them. We honour them, whether it be whether whether it be in a, a school a school sense, an academic sense, a technical sense, or a spiritual sense. So, by practising what Ajahn Brahm has taught us, we can pay respects and give him a big sadhu, a big thanks <laughs> for his guidance over the years, and. So this is the point of this uh, guided meditation. It will be an offering of uh, metta. We call it sometimes loving kindness, friendliness. Uh, in Sri Lanka, we call it maitri. So we, we, this is the offering we will make today, hopefully make today. And it's the best blessing too when we practice what we've been taught. And we can practice... The uh, approach in this uh, metta meditation will be to be our own best friend and to be the best friend of others, to have this approach uh, for the metta meditation today. And the best friend, of course, is someone who's there for us through thick and thin. So this is a very important quality of a best friend. And it's always important for all of us, isn't it, to be on good terms with ourselves because we have to, after all, we have to live with ourselves. And we have to like, or at least accept ourselves as we are, but realising that we can change. And I know uh, metta, or loving kindness, friendliness, was an important quality for me when I lived in Sri Lanka. Uh, I lived in Sri Lanka for almost 14 years, um, and uh, for eight of those I lived in a cave on my own. So this quality of metta, of loving kindness, friendliness, it was very important for me that I could live with myself in the forest on my own. And uh, so this was something uh, I found very, very useful in my practice. And I think, too, it helps with the animals, the beings you encounter in the forest, too. If you have this metta, this loving kindness, this intention of not harming any being, they tend, fortunately, not to harm you. <laughs> and it's a very important quality to develop in these days, isn't it? Particularly with all these COVID lockdowns that we, we seem to be, we, we experience. Because people often have to spend time on their own, self-isolating or quarantining for two weeks. And of course, for a spiritual practitioner, that's like a mini retreat, isn't it? <laughs> And uh, the important thing, as I mentioned, you know, with living in the cave for eight years, is meta create meta or friendliness, maitri, creates this sense of connection uh, between ourselves and others. And we can sometimes people can be uh, emotionally close with people who are a long way away, and the converse can be true. Sometimes people are physically close, but emotionally a long way from each other. So this is a very important quality to develop. Because when we look at what most human beings really, what their deepest wishes are for, of course they are, all beings want to have this happiness. They want to have love, friendship, acceptance, kindness, a sense of safety and security, and contentment and satisfaction, and a sense of peace. And of course, to be free of problems and difficulties of body and mind. And there's one saying I like very much uh, from an Indian teacher. He said, and this applies very much to loving kindness, if we want to be loved, we may not be. But if we want to give love, who can stop us? <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? It's really good. So as I mentioned, I think most people watching this have a, a, f a good idea of what metta is. 
And as I mentioned, friendliness is, is a good term. I like kindness a lot these days. But friendliness is very close to the literal meaning of uh, uh, metta, which is close to the word mitta, friend, or mitra in the Sanskrit. And the important thing with metta, with loving kindness, with friendliness, is not the words, not the concepts, it's the feeling of metta that we are wishing to develop, to bring up. That is the power in this meditation. So it's the feeling of well-wishing, and as I mentioned, friendliness and kindness, acceptance, goodwill, you know, and appreciation too. All these good qualities. And of course, metta is really fa- uh, focusing on the good qualities of ourselves and others, rather than looking at the, our faults, the faults of ourselves and others. And we look for what's good or what's right about ourselves, other people, the situations we find ourselves in, whether it be at home, work, school, wherever it is. And it's really the complete opposite of the critical mind, the fault-finding mind. Uh, The critical mind can have uh, its uses, but it can have its drawbacks as well. So this uh, metta, this uh, mind tree, this loving kindness, is a very natural quality all human beings have, and we can develop it. Of course, the, uh, the Buddha, he developed it as a vehicle for taking us towards liberation. So it's quite, it's something that uh, has a lot of power in it and a lot of uh, strength in it. And I realized this uh, some years ago when I was doing my first teaching in the uh, meditation group near Ajahn Brahm's monastery. It's called Armidale. And uh, I was doing a, a medi- I was giving a, a guided meditation, an introduction, and then a guided meditation, just like this, really. <laughs> and when I was doing the introduction, I had these incredible waves going through the body of metta, of friendliness, of loving kindness, and it was like 240 volts. I thought at the time, this is extraordinary. I'm not teaching uh, metta, loving kindness, and of course. When I experienced that, it was wonderful actually, it was very good because, you know, when you give your first teaching, feeling a bit nervous and a bit out of your depth. And uh, so when I experienced this, it was very relaxing and, and very joyful. And of course, who did I think? <laughs> it wasn't coming from me, I was very sure of that, but it was coming from another source. And I thought naturally of Ajahn Brahm who I just uh, said goodbye to. We'd had the evening cup of tea and then we went to this uh, meditation group. So I thought, oh, maybe he's thinking of me and sending this metta. It was certainly 240 volt metta. (laughs) Important thing is how do we uh, how do we develop metta? And there is it's very important that we develop it not only through our minds, through meditation, but through our actions and our speech too. The Buddha um, emphasizes that. And he emphasizes not only in public, but in private too. So this is uh, something that we need to develop throughout our our day, actually, in our daily life. And of course, it's where we make the most karma, is in our daily life. So it's when we develop this meditation, we're reconditioning our minds reducing the negative qualities, particularly anger and these uh, fear, depression, anxiety, these sorts of things. And the way we can develop this uh, metta uh, meditation is we have these skillful means. Ajahn Brahm calls them like kindling. (laughs) Kindling is a word for little wood that you use to start a fire. And Whatever actually really brings out the feeling of metta, that is a very useful or skillful means. So for some people, they use the uh, words of metta. So you often hear, don't you, you know, may I be well and happy, may I be free of suffering. May you be well and happy, may you be free of suffering. But the important thing with the words is that they bring up this feeling of metta. So the words can be about friendliness, developing loving kindness, safety and security. All these qualities, acceptance is very good. 
So the words are just like signposts that bring up this feeling of loving kindness. And sometimes we can use images. This is another approach that I like very much. And of course, Ajahn Brahm uses this with the, he recommends, doesn't he, that uh, we use images like a kitten, you know, some, something, a being that really arouses this uh, sense of friendliness, kindness, almost protectiveness um, in our hearts. And he also, he mentions, of course, I like this approach very much, opening the door of your heart. And this I find very useful, you know, if you open your heart to whatever you're experiencing. Sometimes it's not pleasant, but it can be a very useful approach, actually, because usually we push things out, we close the doors, we exclude things from our heart, as it were. And we can also use concepts, which I'm using today, which is like the best friend, you know, thinking of the qualities of a best friend. And of course, the famous one, isn't it, is the Buddha's uh, image of a mother's love for her only child. And that is that sort of uh, love, that kindness, is a, is, a, is a concept we can use so that we can actually, for instance, think of ourselves as our own child, and we're the mother too, <laughs> and other beings as our children. Uh, so that can be a good approach. And gratitude is another way we can uh, develop, uh, bring up, light the fire of metta or loving kindness and of course one of the things one of the innovations i think one of the things i found very useful in my practice of metta was when uh, ajahn brahm uh, he's taught how he gave metta to his breath at one retreat and how extraordinary the results of that were how it took the mind very very deep and so i and he, I remember uh, meeting him after that retreat at the monastery. And uh, I, was, I was very struck <laughs> because he said, I can't speak now. And that's very unusual for Ajahn Brahm. And he just, I've got to go to my hut, to my kuti. And uh, later, after the, uh, he, that evening, when we were having the evening cup of tea, he came out and he said, ah, I had given metta to my breath at the retreat and the mind had started to go deeper and deeper. I really like that approach. So I tend, when we develop metta, we can give it to the breath, infuse it in the breath to make the breath so much more attractive. So these are some approaches to, to metta. And uh, it's also, I like to emphasize too, we can have two uh, modes of practicing metta and uh, you see it quite uh, in the teachings quite a lot we can start out wishing ourselves and others to be free of difficulties and we have that famous uh, chant which in English is may you abide in well-being in freedom from affliction in freedom from hostility in freedom from ill will in freedom from anxiety and may you maintain well-being in yourself so it's a mixture isn't it of, of negative states that we're wishing ourselves to be free from and this well-being that we wish to maintain or develop and so this can be very, very useful approach when we have negative states of mind running, uh, uh, feelings like anxiety, fear and depression, restlessness, all these things. And the other side, of course, we're wishing more positive mental states like happiness, contentment, warmth, acceptance, friendliness, all these things. So we can uh, practice this. Uh, and of course, the this, the results of metta, we see for ourselves, you know, <laughs> you can experience it in ourselves. I know for myself, it was a, uh, when I uh, developed the metta practice, it helped the meditation enormously because it overcomes a lot of those negative qualities that are hindrances to the meditation, particularly, you know, any fear, anxiety, uh, worry, those sorts of things, anger. And... So it removes these hindrances, and those hindrances are what the only thing Ajahn Brahm often says is that stand between us and deep meditation and deep wisdom as well. So, 
And one of the nicest things about metta is it's a very pleasant experience to develop metta or loving-kindness meditation. So now we can uh, uh, do start the guided meditation and uh, I will guide it for about 15-20 uh, minutes and then I will become silent. So you can continue with the meditation. So firstly, we can close our eyes and come into the present. Let go, we can let go of the future and the past and take a holiday from them. And just feel like what it how the present moment is. And we can adjust our bodies to be comfortable, whether it's uh, sitting on a cushion, on a chair, just seeing, just making, arranging the body so it's comfortable. So a sense of balance in the body. Now we can mentally relax the body, starting at the top of the head, the sides of the head, the back of the head, soothing it and relaxing it with this kind, warm attention. And then Moving our attention down to the forehead, allowing it to relax, soothing it. And relaxing all around the eyes and the cheeks of the face and the mouth and chin, soothing them. giving them a mental massage. Now moving our attention down to the throat, all around the throat, giving this warm, kind attention to the throat. Now bringing to mind the right shoulder, starting at the neck and slowly moving our attention along the right shoulder, soothing it, relaxing it, giving it this kindness. Now bringing to mind the right arm, moving our attention slowly down the right arm, all around it, to include the elbow, the wrist, hand and fingers of the right hand, soothing them, relaxing them. Now bringing to mind the left shoulder, starting at the neck and moving along the left shoulder, relaxing and soothing any tension, any hardness, any strain, soothing it, relaxing it, allowing it to soften.
Now bringing to mind the left arm, starting at the top of the left arm and moving our attention slowly down the left arm to include the elbow, the wrist, the hand and fingers of the left hand with this warm, kind attention. Now we can bring to mind the back, starting below the shoulders and slowly moving our attention down the back, giving it a good mental massage, especially any uh, painful or hard areas, any areas of tension, giving them this warm, relaxing attention. Now bringing to mind the front of the body, starting below the shoulders and moving our attention slowly down the front of the body to include the chest, the diaphragm, the stomach and the abdomen, soothing any tight, any tense, hard areas, giving it this mental massage. Now bringing to mind the right leg, starting at the top of the right leg and slowly moving our attention down the right leg to include the knee, ankle, foot and toes. Now we can bring to mind the left leg, starting at the top of the left leg and moving our attention slowly down the left leg all around to include the knee, the ankle, the foot and the toes, soothing them, relaxing them, being kind.
Now we can bring to mind the whole body sitting here, wherever we find ourselves in the present moment. Just aware of being here. And we can bring to mind the intention to develop this feeling of being a best friend to ourselves, others, and experiences that we have in life, whether they are pleasant or unpleasant, not rejecting anything. So we can bring to mind or visualize a best friend we know or think of the qualities of a best friend. A best friend who is we enjoy being with, feel really relaxed with, sense of connection and warmth, kindness, being generous, someone that really understands us. So we can bring to mind, visualize a best friend, all these qualities of a best friend. And we can get in touch with the feeling that this brings up. The feeling of friendship, of warmth, connection. And we can fill ourselves from head to toe with this feeling of being a best friend. To ourselves. Filling our body and our minds. Being completely at ease with ourselves. And now we can give this feeling of being a best friend to our breath. This feeling of friendliness, kindness, care. Breathing it in and breathing it out. And if the feeling of being a best friend reduces, remember the qualities of the best friend that you had in mind or the qualities of being a best friend. So that feeling, emotion can come up again. And now I will 
be silent uh, and we can continue to develop the feeling of being a best friend to our breath, breathing it in and breathing it out.
And now we're coming close to the end of the meditation, so we can dedicate the merit of this meditation, whatever uh, feeling we have developed of being a best friend, to offer it to our Dhamma teachers, our spiritual friends or guides, Kalyanamittas or Kalyanamitra, and especially to Ajahn Brahm, offering this metta to, to you, Bhante, out of enormous thanks and respect. May you have a long life, good health, and the highest spiritual happiness. And may you continue to teach us and inspire us, Bhante. And we can share this feeling with, of being a best friend with everyone who's listening to this live streaming. And we can exp uh, share this feeling of being a best friend with all those near us, around us, living around us, and expand that feeling, radiating that feeling in ever-widening circles to include all beings, widening, widening, covering the whole earth and all realms of existence. And we can have the aspiration or intention to develop more of this feeling of being a best friend to ourselves, to everyone we encounter, and everything we experience as much as possible. And may our speech and our actions come from this feeling of being a best friend. And we can anchor this feeling of being a best friend to ourselves and others in our hearts. And we can reflect on this meditation how do we feel now as compared to when we started? Was I able to get in touch with the feeling of being a best friend? Do I feel more kindly, more friendly, more safe and relaxed? And, very importantly, what caused these feelings to arise? And when I ring the bell three times, we can come out of meditation. Thank you, Ajahn Brahm. <laughs> <laughs>